All right, so in this video, we're gonna tackle the new filter to correct wide angle troubles. Check this out. Now, I love this new feature in Photoshop 6. I love it, I love it, I love it. Check this out. Right click, open in camera row. This photo is a, taken, is a photo of La Défense, which is like a business Manhattan type like area in Paris. And uh, so I'm gonna do the usual that I've showed you so far. I'm gonna open up the shadows. I'm gonna bring down the highlights. Uh, boost up, do the whites with the Alt key. Now, until I find white points, here it is. And then the black. Okay, I have a lot of black. I'm gonna boost up the clarity. I think it works well, clarity on this photo. And um, maybe I'm gonna go and to the colors, I'm gonna saturate the yellows. I can see there is yellows. And I'm gonna saturate the orange. Maybe change the use, make the orange a bit more reddish and the yellows a bit more yellows. Okay, go back. The temperature, temperature, I'm gonna move to the right, the temperature to make it even more like sunset-like and maybe add a bit of magenta, a little tiny bit. Okay, uh, maybe I'm gonna even boost more the clarity and I'm gonna brighten up the photo a little bit. Something like this, okay. Okay, and um, now this this is an interesting case. You see, I have the shadows at plus 100 and I want to open up the shadows a bit more, but I want to touch so much of the sky. Now you can go further on this and this existed before. You can go into the second tab and I can take the dark part of the photo. You know, you have a bit the same thing, highlights, lights, dark and shadows, and I can further open up now this is not good, maybe the shadows here. I can further open up the shadows, not that much. Something like this and something like this. And maybe bring down the highlights. Uh, no, yeah, something like this maybe. Okay, yeah. All right, I'm gonna bring this vibrance up, make the whole photo pop and maybe add a bit more contrast. Okay, I kind of like this this look, you know. Uh, now, there is a lot of, uh, of wide angle problem. I could correct it using the lens correction. And I'm actually gonna activate the uh, unable lens profile, which is gonna correct a bit of, of, uh, of things. I'm gonna remove the chromatic aberration and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what? I'm gonna do some, um, yeah, I'm gonna go here and do some post crop vignetting, something like that, yeah. Okay, but I still have a lot of troubles with the, um, and I wanna show you how you can handle this in Photoshop CS6. So I'm gonna click open image, now I've done my road development, and I'm gonna show you this new filter, which I love, really love, because I think it's really easy and, and gives a great result. So let me zoom out. I'm gonna duplicate the background, and ladies and gentlemen, here is this new incredible filter called Adaptive Wide Angle. Now, when you open up, it works with this new Mercury engine, which you have, and actually all this very heavy uh, lifting type of filters, they work with this new Mercury engine. The way it works is basically, it works with your graphic card, so uh, it's much faster. Now, check this out. Uh, the, the, the algorithm, the filter detected that this was shot with a 17 to 40, very wide angle lens. And check this out. If I click here and I just click on the bottom of the building and draw a line, see how the line is gonna follow uh, the, the bending of the building. I can click here and now I can right click and say, I want this to be vertical. And check this out. Wow. Now, this building is now a bit crooked, so that's fine. It takes a bit of time. I click on the bottom. I get the lines to fill up the building. I click on the top and I click on vertical. Okay, and now it's starting to become something, but now here it's still rounded, no problem. I click here and look how the line is gonna follow the building automatically because it knows what's, what's happening. And right click, vertical. Same thing here. Check this out. Up, oh, it's gonna follow the line, and I do. I click here. Oops. Sorry. I I right click it before I I left click it. So I 
here I click and right click on the dot here and say vertical. Okay, same thing here. Now it takes a bit of time, but I, I, I took this extreme case to show you the power of this algorithm. I think it's crazy good. Okay, horizontal, oops, no, this is, I must have messed up on this one. So I'm gonna erase it. And now I'm gonna take this line, for example. Ha, what I love, I'm sorry, I erase this again. I click one time and then just get the line. Look how it follows the building. I don't know how it does this, this is crazy. Okay, I click and right click vertical. Okay, same thing here. I take, I follow this, so let me go a bit faster. Right click, vertical. And uh, let's do it here also. Vertical. Now see how the bridge is completely not horizontal? Now check this out, same thing. Uh, it follows the bridge, I right click, and I'm gonna tell it I want it to be this time horizontal. And boom, it's straight. Maybe same thing here with this. I tell it to be uh, uh, horizontal. I don't know if that's gonna work. Yeah, it works. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now I'm satisfied with the end result. I click on OK. Now, of course, I have to recop the photo, but check this out. Uh, before, after. Now, I'm gonna use a crop tool, the new crop tool, and I'm just gonna crop in the photo so it takes out all the parts that we don't need. Something like this and something like this. Okay. And I press enter. Now, uh, so check this out before, after. Pretty amazing. Now here we have some parts missing. So I'm just gonna crop them out and crumb them out here also. Yes, maybe bring this back a little bit. Exactly. Okay, so here you have this new filter. Check this out. Before, after. I love the result, I think it's crazy good. So let me save this. As usual, it's gonna save in the background so we, it, it's, we lose no time and uh, and voila, see how it says 75%. I can still working what it's saving. So, okay, command W to finish this. And let's go back to bridge. So let me show you another example. Same thing, I open up in camera row. This is a photo of the uh, town hall in Paris. So I open up the shadows, bring down the highlights. I'm gonna warm up, uh, no, I'm gonna do the whites. I go to the right until I see spots. See here we have some spots and the blacks okay then i'm going to bring the shadows the temperature the overall temperature a bit to the right there's a little bit of magenta i kind of like that and um yeah oh i forgot to bring the highlights back in okay i'm going to do a little graded filter same thing you know with the exposure i click you know now i'm going fast because you you, you understood how this worked and i'm going to lower the exposure even more Okay, I'm gonna boost the clarity. I love clarity, especially on like buildings with a lot of designs like this. And um, boost the set to the vibrance. Uh, let's see if I go to the left or to the right, see what happens. Maybe, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna go back here a bit to the left to get the blues and take a brush. And I love that. And I'm gonna paint temperature. I'm gonna paint some yellows and a bit of magenta here because I know that there was, the sun was there and it was a bit of sun here and it was a bit on the building. Now check this out how I'm painting with temperature. This is totally new and I love it. I think it's really good when you have like mixed temperatures like this, you know. Uh, look, I'm gonna go the whole way here maybe and the whole way there, you know, to get a real contrast between this warm tones and the cool tones, you know, something like this or maybe it's a bit too much. But anyways, the whole point is I want to show you this new wide angle um, correction filter. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna click on the hand to get out, maybe add a bit of contrast even more, and um, boost up a bit the exposure, slightly a bit, do the post crop v-netting, 
stack like we do yeah something like this all right and now i click on open image okay and i'm going to do the same thing that we did before so background i duplicate the layer i go into this new crazy good filter the adaptive wide angle love it really love it and here i come i click here it follows the lamp i go to the top of it and i right click and i say i want this to be horizontal oops sorry not horizontal vertical <laughs> this is something you should do make sure you don't mix up like i just did between the horizontal and the vertical i want this to be vertical okay that works and now telling him i want this wall i want this wall to be also vertical okay and now just with two lines everything is pretty much set i can just click on okay and check this out before after now i'm going to take the background off i'm going to do a bit of cropping so uh maybe just here the sky i can easily recreate and maybe a bit here but i want to make this a bit more pano so i press enter now that's the problem with this filter is you're going to get this white part now it's pretty easy uh, to handle if uh, you have um, uh, you know if you have um, just sky to copy uh, the fastest way to do this is you just take the lasso tool uh, you know make a selection around the area and uh, you go into edit uh, let me see let's see if, we, if, if i can use the patch tool so i'm uh, the new patch tool was the content aware uh, let me see if this works so the patch tool is here and the only thing i need to click is sample all layers i think that's important see what happens if i do that yes perfect yeah there's a bit of tiny bit things but that's fine let's just patch it away patch it away or you can use the clone stem tool you know that's probably the fastest to correct this clone stem tool is here it's the letter s you alt press on the clean area and i just paint here paint here hmm. okay let me erase this um okay i can take the patch tool again Put it on a, on a sort of a darker part, not so much darker part. Let's see if that does something good. You can take the borders. No, stem tool is going to be probably better. Ah, oh, that's funny because usually I never had trouble with that, and now that I'm doing this tutorial, I have this sort of trouble. Now there's many ways to to deal with that, and I'll show you one way that I do it, which is rather simple. When you, you cannot find the tones, you just duplicate the layer and you go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and you blur the hell out of it until the problem is kind of gone. It's gonna mix the colors, something like this. Okay, yes, something like this. And then you create a mask with this, but a black mask. The way you create black mask is you press Alt. And now, I take a brush and this is how mask works you know uh, if the mask is black anything this is a blurred layer it's black mask so nothing is going to put through except that if i paint with a, a, a white uh, i'm at a, an opacity of 80 percent with a white brush i can just brush this and uh, i'm just br brushing a blurred sky but now you see how it blurred all the little uh, stamp points and everything so that's perfect okay but the original i'm going to merge these two layers by selecting them and pressing command e but the main thing i wanted to show you was this you know the lens correction pretty 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 heavy stuff all right so let's save this into our final result and uh look at this 35 it's saving and i can still work i just love that let's close this okay so that's it for this filter. Let's go into another project.